are doing today is I'm gonna actually pour these candles and I'm gonna show you how I do it. So that way if you um, wanna try to tackle this on your own at home, um, I would love for you to, to try it and to share uh, your experience with this. If you are a master candle maker, share your love and expertise with us. If there's something that you see um, you think would be super helpful and beneficial to what we're doing here, I would love to know. This is um, trial um, and experimenting that I've been doing over the past couple of months, and I really feel like we've honed in on something that is super fragrant. Um, this is 100% soy wax, so you don't have kind of that black smoke that goes up in the air with the inexpensive candles. Um, our fragrant scent smells amazing, and it smells good year round. So, and I love the idea of the vintage dishes that we're putting them in as well. So, I'm going to get started and kind of show you um, what all you're gonna need. I have a, is this hot yet? Oh, I haven't turned it on. Okay, so this is a hot plate. You can get this at Walmart, Target, Amazon, wherever, not expensive. And really all of the supplies that you need um, to do this are, are not expensive at all. I would say you could get everything for probably less than a hundred dollars which for a startup kit in any craft is really probably not a huge investment um this would be a really good thing if you're trying to make christmas gifts or um trying to start a small business um i know a lot of friends that have started small businesses off of candle making and it's a very low cost um, to get started so it's it's a good um way to try it out so the hot plate you're gonna also need a scale, a small scale. You are gonna need a thermometer. You are going to need, I'm using a hot glue gun, but you can also purchase those little squishy tacks. I don't know what they're called, but it's kind of just like a ball of rubber that's really sticky. You can get those. Um, you can also use double-sided foam pads, which you can get at a candle company online if you're looking for um, candle making supplies online, they will be on there. You will also need whatever this thing is called right here. It's all metal. We also need, I have, this is my scientific little notepad here with all my notes over the past couple of months of tweaking and adding and all of that. You're gonna need wicks. You're gonna need soy wax, which I don't know if I'm strong enough to show you, but I have a giant box down here of wood, uh, let me show you. They look like this. They're little chips of wax and you can get it. I have a, I think this is a 50 pound box of wax down here. Um, you can get it as small as one pound at a time. So don't think that you have to buy wax in bulk if you are just wanting to play around and do this. So it's sold in flakes little chips. Um, you can get it in a big block, but that would be really difficult because um, the chips melt down really nicely and um, the block, I think, would you would probably burn your wax before the entire thing was melt. So I would definitely recommend getting the flakes. I think that's it. And then your container. So where I would start is I would turn my hot plate on to medium start letting that heat up and then I am going to do two pounds of candle pouring so 32 ounces 30 is that right yeah 32 ounces of flakes are going to go in here but before you pour when you get your um whatever scale out you're going to want to calibrate that because if you were to put chips in here and then just measure it's not going to account um, like deduct the weight of the container from your true weight of the flakes so you're going to put this on your scale i don't i've had a couple of different scales and they pretty much all calibrated the same that i've had so far this one is taylor brand um here's a close-up of it if you're wanting just to get the same one it's really really easy you are gonna turn it on. There's an on button here. So you turn it on. You wait for it to go to zero. You put your pan on there, which it's gonna say that this weighs nine ounces. You push the on button again, and it takes the weight of the container away. So now with this on there, we're at zero. So when you add the flakes in there, you're gonna know what your true weight of the flakes are. 
This is supposed to calibrate, it's not doing it. There it is, it's at zero now. Okay, so we're gonna add 32 ounces of flakes in here, which is pretty much a full container. So I kind of, I fill it up most of the way. Well, it went, there we are, okay. And I put it on here and I'm at 27, so I need to add a handful. So I just start adding until I get to the weight that I want. If you guys have questions along the way or I'm not covering something, please put them up there. And Marin is kind of watching that just to make sure I'm not missing comments as I do this. Okay, so we're right at 32 ounces. Now what I will tell you is there is an art to this. So you really do um, not want to fudge it at all. Like you wanna have the exact amount on everything, the right amount of wax, the right amount of oil. Um, that extra splash of oil does not mean that you're gonna have an extra fragrant candle. So. Be mindful of that. That's where the experimenting comes in. You can't just kind of uh, like make, make major tweaks and think that it's gonna work out. Now, if you wanna experiment and see if you can make it something better and great, that's different. Just know that you're risking it. Okay, so this is the part we wait. It doesn't take that long. Um, you're going to get your thermometer out Obviously it needs to melt. You need a stir stick. That's something I didn't say. Um, I just use a regular paint stir stick. Um, I know a lot of candle makers that I've watched do tutorials on this use a metal one, which let me dig here. I also have my super professional metal skewer that I already owned. Um, and I did use this. I just, I like the paint stick better. I can I just feel like I can stir it better so um, I wait for this to melt all the way down which if I had two of these I would have already pre melted this for you so you didn't have to sit here and watch it melt but while that is melting I'll tell you we are waiting until this is fully melted um, it should be clear in color and once it starts to kind of melt down, I'll stick the thermometer down there, down in it until it's fully melted. Um, while we're doing that, I'll show you how I attach the wicks because I'll have to attach the wicks to all of these. But um, we're going to heat this wax up to 140 degrees once, which is very important. So once that starts to melt, we'll put the thermometer in and um, I'll show you what that looks like. So to attach the wicks, there's a lots of different kinds of wicks that you can get, um, lots of different thicknesses. They're made of all kinds of different things. Um, let me see if it says on my bag here. Mm -hmm. I got the six inch wicks and mine say Eco on them. So mine are covered in wax and it had a 100% cotton fiber um, wick, which from everything I read just meant that the duration of the wick was supposed to last longer and um, not smoke as much too, so. Hot glue gun. So I go kind of the cheap route on the little stickums that are going to hold the bottom of your wick to the bottom of your container and use a hot glue gun. So I would just dab this. The reason why you want to attach them to the bottom is once you start pouring you don't want your wick to kind of float up at all you want to make sure that it's staying at the very bottom so that way when you're burning your candle it's going to burn all the way down to um, the very bottom of your wax and use it all so i just put i guess i should have showed you that let me try again okay so here's what the bottom of the wick looks like it's a little metal disc and I just put a little dab of hot glue on the metal disc here, like that, and then just find the center of my cup and just press it down. Now we're going to use 
you know, my very professional chopsticks, my wooden skewers, not chopsticks, and we cut them in half so they weren't so long, this is what's gonna hold my wick in place. So once we get to the part where we're pouring, this is what's going to keep my wick um, standing straight up and in the center. I have also used tape. Um, I have used, or Gina suggested popsicle sticks. Um, you can purchase, let me grab this. I feel like I'm going like the wizard, like going behind the, I have a box of tricks down here. Um, you can purchase these little metal, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they kind of rest on the container just like that. And the wick, there's three different holes. So if you're needing to do two wicks or one wick, um, there's three different holes here and that just keeps it lined up perfectly in the center. And you know, um, I just went the inexpensive route instead of purchasing a whole bunch of these. Um, we use chopsticks, not chopsticks, skewers. Wooden skewers is what we use or tape. I did tape the last time I made these. So, if you want to be fancy, you can get your little metal doohickeys. I don't know what you want to call them. Okay, so it's probably been three minutes. Okay, and we're about halfway there. So if I, woo, if I can show you, maybe, without pouring it on the counter. We're about halfway there. We're pretty, getting, getting pretty close. So I should be stirring, making sure that none of it is just sitting on the bottom, is gonna start burning or anything like that. Okay, so we still have a couple more minutes before this is gonna be fully melted. So we'll just keep, keep on gluing these down. Cause this has to be done actually before I was doing it in the right order, you probably want to start with attaching your wicks. Essential oils for your scent. Um, so we do use essential oils. And I will tell you, um, when I ordered all kinds of oils to experiment with, this brand, let me tell you, um, it is called True Scent. Let me see if I can get it. Or here, can you hold that closer so they can see? Um, True Scent, and it, when I, I'll find the company that I ordered it off of. Oh, close. there we are, yeah. Um, so that way if you want to order from the same company, that would be great because I have actually tried this and blends and they actually have blends that they've already done for you that smell amazing, um, where you don't have to experiment with blending different types together because that can go south like real quick too. So. Um, this one right here smells really good too. This is called Citrus Spruce. Um, it's a really good kind of Christmassy scent. So I would check this out and they do all essential oils when they're mixing. Um, so you're not gonna have any harsh chemicals that um, is mixed inside your candle. So um, check that out. True Scent again is the name of that. Um, the ratio that I use is 16 ounces of wax, because this is actually super important. Um, 16 ounces of wax to 1.1 ounces of essential oil. So you really don't wanna go um, above or below that. That's what I have found. There's technical terms when you start getting into the candle world that I kind of learned, like throw, what's else? You know, you remember? No, that was. There's crazy stuff. Like they'll say like the candle scent throw is what you actually can smell. Um, I just know that I experimented with a couple of different ratios that um, different people had recommended. And this is the one when I burnt the candle, smelled most fragrant to me. So that's the one I kind of stuck with. Okay, we're almost there. We just have a couple of guys that look like this little blob right here floating down in the bottom. So we'll just give it a couple more minutes and I'll keep working on Vix.
but if I can show you, it looks like. Do you see how that, am I about to pour or no? You can see it. Okay, so it's clear. There's no, no white chucks. It's not even hazy, if you're wondering. Um, before it turns completely clear, it can look kind of cloudy. You don't want it to be cloudy. Um, I am actually going to remove my hot plate so I don't burn my hands. Okay, so we're gonna put the thermometer in. It has this little clip on the side um, so you can clip it to the side of the container. So that way the tip of your thermometer isn't just resting on the metal on the bottom of the container here because then obviously it's gonna read a lot harder than it really is. So you wanna clip it to your side of your container here and then leave it for just a minute or so to get the read on this. We're gonna add um, the fragrance when it's at 140 degrees. So right now it might be too hot to add fragrance to it. I don't think we're done reading yet. Let's see, oh, something else to think about. The width of your container. Um, let, me, let me stick this before I stick it to something else. So I just stuck it to the side. Okay, the width of your container. So I would tell you what the actual measurement needs to be. I don't know what that is, if I'm being real honest. So I believe if it is four inches in diameter, you're fine with one width. But if you go past that, you really need to have two. I'm gonna double check that because I'm not positive. 100%, about 95%. So four inches. So like this one right here is kind of on the fence if I would need one or two. So I'm actually not gonna pour this one. I'm gonna wait until I know for sure. But what will happen if you put one and the, the, the diameter of the wax is too wide is you're gonna end up with like a funneling of the candle and it's gonna end up hurt, like burning it, putting itself out. So this isn't gonna burn great. So that's something else that you kinda wanna think about when you're choosing your containers. Um, is this gonna be a one wick or a two wick candle and really put that into consideration and make sure um, that you're gonna end up with a good product. So, let's see what we're at. Okay, so it's pretty hot. We are reading a little over, let's like smear it on there, 175. So, I know y'all probably cannot see that from there, but, um, so we're gonna have to wait just a little bit, stir it, let it cool down some before we put the fragrance in. Um, what happens if you put the oil in the wax while the wax is way too hot? What happens is the oil doesn't blend with the wax. It kind of stays separated and when you go to burn it, there's not gonna be, a, you'll have like dead areas. So they'll have areas where you're just burning the wax, there's no oil in it at all, um, and you don't end up with a good, consistent, fragrant candle. So it is very important that you let it cool down to a certain temperature, which I use 140 degrees before you add the oil to the wax. Now, we can add. Okay, so what I have here is I pre-measured, so you wouldn't have to watch me do that, but this is 2.2 ounces of my oil blend, and I measured the exact same way. So the way I do it is I just kept, this is a container that one of my oils came in when I was experimenting. You can also just get an empty container. Really, you can use anything. You're gonna do the exact same thing. Make sure you calibrate your container to your scale because your scale is still on the weight of this container, not this container. So you're gonna want to do the same thing. While it's empty, you'll put it on your scale, turn it on, turn your scale on first, put it on your scale, then push the power button again and make sure it calibrates back to zero. And then you'll, I use a funnel, um, because I actually, once I've created what blend we're gonna do, it's in a big bottle and we pour it all in the small, bottle here with a funnel so I can measure it. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Okay, so now we're just going to add our oil to our wax. Okay, and stir. And now 
you gotta wait again because we don't wanna pour the wax until it's between 67 and 75 degrees, somewhere in there. So you kinda just let this sit, stir it around for a while. Maybe do this while you watch TV. I don't know what else you would do. Stare outside at the wind blow the trees. super cute and it's gonna look really fun um here we are we got clear wax and my wick is good so we are just gonna slowly pour again the wax is between 67 and 75 degrees when you do this and something that I'm not doing that I wanted to do I'm not exactly sure how to do it now that Okay, so this is a thing. If you want to know how much wax is in each container, because maybe you are planning on doing this to sell, um, you want to know, that's important to know, how much wax you've used per each cup. So you could, after this is set up and hardened, you can do the exact same thing with your calibration of your scale, as you can go through and weigh each one just so you have an idea how much you have invested in your candle. So there's, there's that little resell tip for you. Oh, I didn't tell you. Okay, so right here, um, if you can see the this teacup right here. I don't know. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm just using my wooden skewers, skewers right here to kind of make that wick stand straight up. And not only straight up, but kind of notice if it's in the center of your cup. Um, Cause some of them will go at an angle and it looks, or they'll go straight, but it's actually not going in the center. So just kind of make sure that you're being mindful of that right there. This little goblet I think it's really cute I think it has kind of like a boho vibe um, we have a cute red and green one that would look really cute with Christmas decor um, all these little crystal teacups these little vintage Germany stoneware teacups these are really sweet it has kind of a sage green flower with this cute little green rim on the top here's it with Here's what it looks like with a saucer. So if you want to get an idea of what the whole thing looks like um, with the saucer, there you go. Very darling. Here, this one's cute too. It's a, a sugar container. try this. I hope you found this at least fun. Now you know everything that has to do with candle making.